Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology Education videos and today we're going to continue our element breakdown. We went over the rain gauge in the last video, you can find that on our channel as well as over 20 EPA swim lessons going over this software package here. But now we're going to go into the subcatchment element. A lot to tackle here. It is in the hydrology section. So we went over rain gauge already. Let's select subcatchment, click the plus button. Now remember, we actually actually have to draw this subcatchment area and it can relate to your site geography or whatever you're planning to do. I don't really care about it a whole lot in this case. However, we can pull up examples where drawing the subcatchment appropriately can help visually outline what the project uh, is about. So if we left click, we can begin to draw the bounds of this subcatchment. And you can see we can do quite a bit with it here, um, even making it a very weird shape. Now, if you right click, it closes the subcatchment area. Now that's pretty ugly, so I'm not gonna go with that. Let's try it again. So you can add as many points to it as possible. I'm just gonna draw this um, trapezoidal-esque looking shape here. Remember, right clicking closes the outline and closes out the area. So that's our subcatchment element. You can draw multiples of these, have them route, out, route to outfalls and things like that. We went over that uh, in our instructional videos earlier. But now we have a subcatchment element, and now I want to look at some of the features of this subcatchment element. So if I double click, similar to the rain gauge element, we can set the name, its X and Y coordinate, as well as its description and tag. But now let's talk about some of these other things here. So this is the rain gauge. This is the rain gauge that is con connected to this subcatchment. Or if we have a rain gauge, right, if you have rainfall data, it needs to actually fall on a specific site area, right? You can't just have rainfall data, but then no site for which to have it run off, right? That's the whole point of hydrology and hydraulic calculations. So this is allowing you to select which rain gauge it's associated with. So if I added a rain gauge here, for example, rain gauge one, I don't need that second one. So I have a rain gauge one, so I could select here, rain gauge one to have it connected to this, I mean this rainfall data, time series data, is going to fall on this subcatchment, and that's what's going to be used to calculate the runoff. So that's what that means there. And then similarly, if we had hydraulic elements such as junctions or outfalls, if we added those into the software here, we could then choose to have it outlet to a specific junction, or maybe not this junction, but we could have it outlet to another hydraulic element. That's what those two mean there. Now we have the total area, and this is going to be the area of the subcatchment in acres, so keep that in mind. Now, you can change the different flow units here uh, down the bottom in terms of offsets, offsets and CFS, but we have it in acres or English units. You can set it to five, you can set it to 10, you can set the area to whatever you want, right? So drawing this doesn't indicate how much area you actually have, right? It's just representative. You actually insert the actual value here in the element form. So we've selected 10 acres of area. It has a width of 500, so that's the width of the overland flow path that we're going to be selecting. And then you want to add a percent slope to your subcatchment. So we have half a percent of slope. You can go up to one, two, doesn't matter. Um, but the default was a half percent slope. Then this is a percent of the area that is impervious. So think about concrete, roads, roofs, right? Things that aren't going to have natural draining um, and the water is not going to be able to to get through and infiltrate into the ground, right? That's what's considered impervious area. So if we had 10 acres of area here and 25% of that was impervious, that means there'd be 2.5 acres of impervious area in this subcatchment. Then this is the Manning's N for that impervious area, right? We're all familiar with Manning's N. We have videos covering that as well. And then the N for the pervious area as well. Then this is going to be the depth of depression storage on the impervious area as well as the pervious area. So similar factors there. Now this is the percent of the impervious area that has no depression storage at all. So 25% of that impervious area that we have selected is not going to have any form of depression storage. Then you can route it, choice of internal routing between impervious and impervious sub areas. We've selected outlet and then 100% of that is routed. Then you can choose your infiltration data. And so we have Horton selected. You can choose modified Horton, green amped, modified green amped, and curve number for your infiltration method. Each of these work slightly differently. I'm not going to go into in depth here about each one because it can actually get complicated pretty quickly. But you can see there's a max infiltration rate, a minimum infiltration rate, a decay constant for that, for the curve. 
um, a drying time and a max volume. So you can select any of these for your infiltration method for the site. As you can see, we still got a lot more of this element to go. And then are we going to have any groundwater flow pattern, flow parameters? We can change whether this is an aquifer, what some of the coefficients are. And so this is the standard equation for lateral groundwater flow. So you can choose to have that included. We have no selected. You also name of a snowpack parameter set. So for this is only for specific snow melt analysis, um, which we're not going to go into here. Then you can select LID controls. We have no LID controls for this and assignment of land uses to the subcatchment. We don't have any land uses assigned yet. The initial buildup is a pollutant buildup that can be used for the water quality functions, a curb length if needed for pollutant buildup, and then we can have the end pervious, the D store, and the infiltration for that. So that is the subcatchment element. There's a lot here. You're going to be using these a lot if you're using EPA uh, swim because uh, like I said, this rainfall data has to fall somewhere and it's going to be falling on a subcatchment and choosing these parameters that best represent your project area is going to give you a much more accurate result. So if you have any questions about that, leave it in a comment down below. Like I said, we have a playlist of 20 plus EPA swim videos if you'd like to view them on our YouTube channel. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys next time.